Thank you for joining us. It, it is indeed summer, just like what I said. And also, I just wanted to um, uh, shift a little bit here, Jen, and share to us that last Sunday we started once again with part two of our book study, you know, uh, the book of Judges. Yes. And, uh, and again, we, we did this last year. Actually, it was 16 weeks mm -hmm. of part one. I think we're going to be somewhere there about 14 weeks, I think, mm -hmm. for the part two. Mm -hmm. So again, we ended with, um, with Jephthah, you know, Judge Jephthah. And last Sunday, we started with, um, uh, uh, with the story of Samson. We're going to go uh, be talking about this chapter, Josh, Joshua, uh, Judges chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16. And uh, this is what we're going to be um, uh, talking about here. Mm -hmm. So, but Gabby's saying that we have a temperature of 102, 102 in Bakersfield today. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's hot. That's hot. So <laughs> it's about 80 plus here and it's hot. It's 85. So, um, but what I'm saying is that, you know, uh, and this is about, again, the title is the book of, of course, uh, book study, book of Judges, Faith for God. Mm -hmm. And the whole story is that we're jump starting, just like what I'm saying, with a familiar story. Uh, the book of Sa uh, the book of Samson, the story of Samson, but I think the goal here as we study this in 13, 14, 15, 16, four chapters, we're gonna jump start with five weeks. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> uh huh. Is that that we need to understand the story of Samson beyond his encounter with Delilah? Mm -hmm. I think when we talk about the story of Samson, it was just Samson and Delilah, but I think there is more than that mm -hmm. because Samson's story is one of the I believe that one of a wasted, squandered potential, just like what I preached last Sunday, you know, a, um, a wasted and squandered potential mm -hmm. and the failure of him to fulfill his God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. And yet underneath all of that, Jen, at the center of all of that, it is also a story of God's mercy, mm -hmm. God's grace, and God's redemption. Mm -hmm. And even in the midst of those... Um, uh, flaws and, and, and the character flaws in the life of Samson. God was at the center of everything, you know, uh, extending mercy and grace and redemption in the life of Samson. Mm -hmm. So, so far, Jen, what's your take about the intro last Sunday? And also for you guys, if you've listened to the preaching last Sunday, so what was your um, realization? I think that's the, um, you know, I think that's one of the uh, discussion questions that we asked last Sunday. What was your realization? What was this your uh, takeaway? Mm -hmm. I mean, as we start and we jump from that introduction as far as the story of Samson is concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my takeaway was, you know, um, I don't want to waste the God-given potential that God has given me personally, mm -hmm. and, I, it, and it helped me reflect on, you know, the decisions and the choices that I am making today, mm -hmm. you know, because we can't do anything about the decisions we've done in the past, yes. but there's still time for us to make the de decisions today that will help us to uh, be aligned to the you know to God's will and God's purposes and plans for our lives yes. so that we will fulfill the purposes that he has for us Amen. you know and not squander it and i think that was a great you know and I, even up until now i am still pondering on it i'm still thinking about it and you know whenever god asks me to do something you know you kind of think okay do I kick and scream? Do I fight? Do I do I resist? Or do I submit? You know, yeah. and, and so I think that's the thing. Our life here on earth is very short. And yeah. I think the decisions that we make would really, uh, the, the decisions we make now has great impact on whether we would be living up to our full potential in the way that God wants. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Jen. And you could still share, actually, mm -hmm. if you could write your comments as well. Mm -hmm. But for me, when I look at the story of Samson, especially as we started last Sunday, where I said that, you know, uh, great potential doesn't guarantee success. And, and I think that's what it is. You see the life of uh, Samson, there's so much potential. Mm -hmm. And I think the story of Samson as we move forward, starting this coming Sunday, again, we did the intro. Yes. And, uh, great it's intro, great. by the way. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And just to lay down the whole um, the map of yeah. what we're gonna be talking about, yeah. is that, you know, I think both it is a warning right. and also it is a reminder Right. And, and and for us, and just like what you've said, I agree with you that, you know, uh, what we're going to see here is that God is a God of redemption. He redeems us. But the only question is that, do we want to suffer along the way mm -hmm. and then make it right at the very end? It's mm -hmm. like what happened to Samson or make it right right now 
get right with the Lord. When I say make it right, get right with the Lord right now. Then for us to be able to avoid all of the, um, uh, uh, I would say, Heartache. heartaches and pain and, and, and failures and, and, and that Samson went through. And again, all of those is just didn't affect him. It affected his family as well, his mm -hmm. parents, which are godly parents that mm -hmm. he has, and also the people around him. That's right. And I think when you look at that, that is the nature of sin. Sin affects the people around us. Mm -hmm. But more than anything else, I think it's the God-given potential that God really blessed Samson beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the anointing, the blessing, the miraculous birth, just like what we talked last Sunday, mm -hmm. but yet he squandered and wasted them all mm -hmm. because of the choices that he has made. Yeah, you know, right. the question has always been, how could someone with such potential fail? Yeah. And the answer was choices, and that's what I discussed last mm -hmm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me just go read yours, actually, and I'm going to go jump into another vantage point or another perspective in what we're going to look at today, still staying with the birth of Samson in Judges chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And we have some few comments here, Jen, that we're yes. going to read. Okay? Um, Joy says, I agree with you, Jen, about nothing we can do about our past decision, but moving forward, we will have a better decision because of submission to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for such a great reminder. Amen. And again, a reminder. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, there's actually, I would agree that there's nothing that we could do uh, because it's already been a past decision, but also there is something that we could do now yes. to move forward. That's I agree right. with that 100%. Because again, uh, the, the, the decision already we made, but we could change that though. Mm -hmm. That decision that we've made in the past doesn't have to be a permanent decision mm -hmm. because of God's grace. Mm -hmm. God could redeem. God could change the trajectory of That's our right. ending even if we started not in the right foot or not not in the right footing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you guys? Yeah. So uh, what was your take away? And again, as you are contemplating on those, and maybe you're writing, I don't know, so maybe you're still contemplating or just listening. I want you to participate because it's it's going to help me and Jen to, uh, to know if you're still out there mm -hmm. and we are talking to someone, <laughs> not just uh, looking at a uh, an iPad right now. Uh -huh. We would really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right? Yet also, Jen, yes, while well, the story of... Uh, the story re revolves around Samson. That's what we talked about last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And of course, because again, the title is The Birth of Samson, mm -hmm. Samson's Marriage, mm -hmm. Samson Defeats the Philistine, Samson and Delilah, and the Death of Samson. I think pretty much when you read the story mm -hmm. in the fourth chapter, the story indeed revolves around, around Samson. But also, we must remember also, and we should not forget, that God is at the center of it all. Because again, the title of the book of Judges that we put here is that faithful God. Yeah. God is faithful. He is at the center of this. The messy things that we read in the book of Judges. Mm -hmm. God is still there at the center of everything. Not abandoning his people yeah. even though they were unfaithful. And they have decided to walk away from the covenant relationship that they had with God. God says, I'm not going to walk away from you. So what, what, this is the story, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I wanted to highlight tonight. Yes. So when you look at this, yes, there is that squandered potential. Yes, there is that wasted potential. Yes, but at the, underneath all of this, the one that is weaving all of this is God. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think it was um, uh, in our pastor's uh, preaching meeting, I think it was Joshua who mentioned this, that you know, God is a, a God, uh, God who weaves the story of mankind. And you may not see that he is, you may not even see sometimes that he is working, but definitely he is working behind yeah. the scene, mm -hmm. weaving everything mm -hmm. on maybe things that sometimes we don't know, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and he's working. And this is what it is. And that's what I wanted to highlight today. God, yes, Samson's story, but it's God, you know, moving in the life of Samson, moving in the lives of his people mm -hmm. and making sure that he remains faithful to his covenant that he has given to them or covenant between them and god mm -hmm. all right so what are the messages here so mm -hmm. and here's the first one for me and we're going to put that on the screen here's the lesson here in judges 13 when you look at the story in the birth of samson the first one is this gen god is faithful to his promise mm -hmm. god is faithful to his promise if you're watching and you're seeing that i want you to say that with me i want you to read it out loud and declare it god is faithful to his promise. Come on, say that again. God is faithful, faithful to, to his, my promise. To his, to his promise. Yes. 
because I want that to personalize that later is why I'm going ahead a little bit here. So, and look at this, and we start in verse 1. So, and the people of Israel, again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hands of the Phil Philistines for 40 years. The word again reminds us that this was not, this was, this, this was nothing new. <laughs> the word again. So the word again there reminds us as we have done the whole week, uh, you know, 16 weeks of looking at this story. This is actually, this is nothing new. It, it has happened many, many times. The times of the judges, as I have mentioned, is between 350 years to 400 years, most probably around that 350, 370 years, mm -hmm. was characterized by what a theologian would say, a seven cycles or generations of rebellion. Mm -hmm. It was. So when you divide this 350, 370 to 400, when you divide that, it was this seven cycles of rebellion between, you know, God and his people, uh, his people rebelling against God. So you start that, you read that from Judges chapter 10, it ends in Judges chapter 17. So this is where it is. So it has seven cycles of, or seven generations of rebellion. So, and as with their forefathers, as you could see, Israel's disobedience and rebellion led them to what? To bondage, as you could see. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Again, they did it. This is not nothing new. From their forefathers' sin, they have continued. And look at the, the, the cycle that I've given you, because from that rebellion comes what? Bondage. And that is the oppression into the hands of the Philistines. And imagine this, being oppressed for 40 years. That's one generation, by the way, yes. as recorded in the Bible, because a generation is about 40 years. Imagine one generation being oppressed by the Philistines. And go again, uh, these are seafarers, people that have landed in Cana. And, um, and you would see from Judges, you will move to... Uh, uh, the story in First Samuel where uh, uh, the prophet Samuel is going to anoint uh, uh, Saul, David, and the fight between God's people and, and, and also the, the Philistines is going to escalate more and more. Mm -hmm. So this is the situation. Yet even in their suffering, okay, God's sovereign plan for deliverance was already in motion. Wow. Even in their suffering. So when you think, this is where I, I was thinking, Jen. So 40 years, sometimes when you are having some problems, having some challenges for a long, long time, and maybe you're thinking that, you know, where is God into all of this? Why am I going through this situation? It seems like it doesn't end. Maybe for you it's a, been, you know, a challenge and a fight for two years, three years, 10 years. Mm -hmm. But look at this, 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's a long, long, difficult situation for you to be able to, you know, uh, and sometimes you lose hope. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when all of these things are happening over and over again, you lose hope. Mm -hmm. But yet, when you read that story, it starts in verse 1. The oppression, the darkness, and the situation that is going on in the land, you know, in the lives of the Israelites. Look at this. God is working behind the scene. God, if, if, if you don't see, uh, that, if you don't recognize that he's moving, it doesn't mean that he's not moving. So in our situation today, maybe you are here watching and things are difficult. You know, things are challenging. I want you to hear me now. It, it doesn't mean that God is not moving because all of this is this. And then we move to verse two. And there was a certain man of Zorah. Again, look at this. From that point of darkness, from that point of, you know, uh, oppression. Now there was an answer to this because God is moving behind the scene. Why? Because God is faithful to his promise. The promise of God, you know, continues. So even though in a difficult situation like this, and there was a certain man of Zorah of the tribe of the Danites whose name was Manoah and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. And again, like what I have read and what I've shared last Sunday, the situation of this family quite highlights what was going on in the nation of Israel. Barrenness is unfruitfulness. You know, barrenness is a case of hopelessness. But yet in the, in the midst of unfruitfulness, in the midst of hopelessness, a supernatural being appeared. An angel of the Lord comes. Why? Because God is faithful to his promise. Why? Because God is working behind the scene. 
weaving the things together, book to fulfill. Despite Israel's repeated disobedience, God remained committed to his covenant and also his promise to deliver them. And it's interesting, Jen, because again, when you read the story here, and let me just read some of you here, uh, what you need to see here is that he, God initiated the deliverance. Mm -hmm. What we will notice here is this, that they didn't cry out for help. Mm -hmm. Because why? When you read the story, if we've been reading for quite some times, what you would see here is that when the people of Israel were in trouble, they would cry out to the Lord for help. For example, when we talked about Othniel, right? But when the people, verse chapter 3, verse 9, but when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. So again, this is Othniel. You look at the story of Ehud as well. It's the same, right? So again, they were there. Uh, they were under for 18 years. And the Lord set up a deliverer, verse 15. And then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord raised up. So over and over, you would see that, that they would cry out to the Lord for help. This time, they did it. So sometimes here's what happens. And there's some few things that I want to share because maybe it gives you a picture of the callousness of the hearts of people at this moment. Mm -hmm. At this point, there are, their hearts is callous. They are, they're, they're deep into their sin. And they cannot cry out to the Lord anymore. And also, we could say that most of them really just accepted the whole situation as it is. And again, that highlights for me hopelessness. But again, in this, what we could see is that God, this is, at the end of the day, He initiated this. He started the whole thing. They didn't cry out, but God remembers His covenant. He remembers, and you, you, what you could see here is that the, the text is highlighting the character of God. Mm -hmm. You know, highlighting the character of the people, wicked, rebellious, but yet highlights the character of God. What is that? Faithful to his promise. Mm -hmm. So the author is giving us these two pictures. Uh, the character of the people and the character of God. Mm -hmm. The picture here is what we're showing is this. And what is that? God's unwavering faithfulness to his promises. Mm -hmm. So this is what it is. So even to the point when we don't cry out anymore, you know, God is still there. I just can't help but uh, think about this, Jen. Sometimes when we stray from God's path, when we do our own thing, right? So we have done that in our own walk with the Lord, one way or the other. If you have not, okay, praise God. But majority of us, maybe I would say that we have done that. So straying from what God wants, disobeying the Lord also. But yet, here's what you need to understand. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He will actively work to bring us back to himself. Even when you decide that you're going to walk away, he's still going to go and work to bring us back to himself because he is faithful to his covenant. Wow, this is the God that we serve. Even when we decide to walk away, then he still brings us back. Mm -hmm. But again, what I'm saying is that, uh, uh, is that of course, we, we should not abuse his grace. We should not abuse his grace that's being extended to us. But somehow when you look at the story in Luke chapter 15, the parable of the lost uh, sheep, the parable of the lost coin is always the owner looking for mm -hmm. the sheep, the shepherd looking for the sheep, and the owner looking for the coin. Because that's how faithful God is mm -hmm. to us. You know, even when we decide, I'm gonna walk, God is still going to give us a chance to, you know, what, to bring us back to him. Just like what's happening in this story. Wow, what a God that we serve. I just wanted to say that. Jen? Yeah, I'm reminded of the verse that His loving kindness leads us to repentance. Yes. And sometimes, you know, when we don't cry out, uh, sometimes God still in His grace and in His loving kindness, you know, mm -hmm. showers things that are undeserved, yeah. that we don't deserve. Uh, like, for example, rescuing us or saving us mm -hmm. so that we can come to our senses and that we would repent you know, um, and I think that's that just shows how uh, faithful God is to His people and to His yeah. children. And I think, you know, sometimes I love I love this book because it gives gives us a proper perspective on, you know, sometimes 
our situation and, and our relationship are. with God. <laughs> yeah. You know, because sometimes we think, oh, God, God is just leaving us alone, like for wow, forty years, like wow, four hundred years, that like you know, God is not moving, God is not doing something, you know. But the mere fact that again we did evil—that's the beginning. You have to understand where it all started because we did, did evil in evil the eyes, in the of, eyes of the Lord. That's yeah. the so, premise. Yeah, and so personalizing it sometimes when you feel like, oh, why am I going through? You know, these consequences, this suffering is such so-and-so. And it's as if God is not moving. God is not hearing. It's as if, you know, for years you've been waiting, pleading and stuff. But you have to understand, you know, sometimes we have to check ourselves. We are in that position did. because of something that we have done. We, yes. Choices that we have made. Exactly. Yes. Like, and, like. and sometimes we cry out to the Lord. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just accept, just like what you said, you know, we accept yeah. the situation, the hopeless situation, and we give up on God. It's like, yes. you know, I don't think he he hears or I don't think he knows. I don't think he's going to move, so yeah. I'm just going to, you Do know, my own thing. And, not, and not come to him, you yeah. know. But God, in his loving kindness, you know, decides to still work behind the scenes and make a plan to save his people and save us. Yeah. And that would hopefully lead us to repentance. And that's why what you need to understand, this is a seven cycle of rebellion. I know. Seven generations. <laughs> seven times four is 280. And of course, there's a moment of seven times four is 28, so 280. Yeah. So what is seven times 40? So, and then of course, there's like moment of peace in between. That's why right. total of that is 350. Yeah. So total of that, 280 less what? 350? So... They've been rebelling more, more than walking right with God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the story. And just thinking about that, oh my gosh, like God has been so patient. patient. Mm -hmm. God has been so patient. And I think I love that because it puts us in having a proper perspective, perspective. of who we are and who God is. Yes. You know, and not having a perspective of a God that is, you know, a God that doesn't care, a God yes. that doesn't move, that that you know, doesn't move until years, you know. Yeah. No, eh? the proper perspective is that we are the ones who did what is evil in the sight of the Lord. And yet, in His faithfulness to us, He keeps His promise. Exactly. Yeah. That's why when you're experiencing oppression, mm -hmm. you have to understand, you have to ask right away, is it something, some decisions that we have made mm -hmm. that put us in that position? Mm -hmm. Or are the, the uh, let me say this, the people, generational, Mm -hmm. The people before us. before us, your parents, or it's generational curses that have come into our family. Mm -hmm. That's why we are in that position. Because again, this one, I mean, if you've been born since their rebellion, you're kind of like waking up in this, I'm like, what is going on here? So imagine by the time you're 40 years old, I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So, but for those who have made that decision, I think they made, made that decision to rebel against the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is the story. It highlights the heart of God. It highlights the heart of man. Yes. The depravity and the faithfulness. Right. The faithfulness and the unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. Patience of God mm -hmm. and also the impatience of man. Yeah. And just like what you've said, highlights the heart of God in the heart of man. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing here is this. And, 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 and the reality is that God is working behind the scene. Yes. Even though you may not see it. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't give up. We don't let go. We just have to continue to trust and hold on to his promises. Yes. Amen? That's and right. this is what the story of Samson is. Mm -hmm. God is, sorry, God is at the center of all of, all of this. Yes. You know, it's moving, weaving everything. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go read some few comments here. Come on, we wanted to read your comments. Mm -hmm. So there's so many stuff already that we've talked about. We've been talking for about 25 minutes now or more. Mm -hmm. So, yes, let's go read. Yes, Sheila says, um, I always believe that God will answer when it is the right time in his own time we have to trust him wholeheartedly yes and i think when it comes to the promises of god timing is very important as well mm -hmm. and and that's what we're going to talk about that later in, in in number two but yes sheila you are right about mm -hmm. that all right so and again as i share this to you this is some of the stuff that we've talked about in our uh preaching uh meeting so and sharing it to you today together with some of the pastors that are studying this together and here's the, the next one and not only that he's faithful to his promise, but number two is that, okay, let's go continue. 
and here's the next one god's promises are based on his terms on his terms there's a terms so let's read in verse 4 therefore be careful and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean that let's pause for a while you have to understand that the angel of the lord was speaking to um, um samson's mom manoah's wife mm -hmm. so you what you need to understand here is that not only that samson will be a nazarite nazarite for a lifetime that means a vow that is separated committed to the lord but the mom also went through that sacrifice mm -hmm. she was a nazarite for nine months mm -hmm. So because that's, the, you know, when you read this, mm -hmm. the scripture, you know, when you read uh, in the Old Testament, that that vow actually is actually um, uh, could be lifetime, but most of it really for just a specific time. So when you look at this, there's terms to this promise. Yes, God is faithful to his promise. Yes, God would speak his promises to us. But yes, uh, promises are based on his terms, not on our terms, mm -hmm. his terms. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that speaks to the mom. It starts with the mom. That's as if the angel was saying, it starts with you. Look at verse 5. For behold, you shall conceive in there a son. And then look at this. Now this is the vow. You know, now the terms for the mom, the terms for the son or the term for the child. No racial razor shall come upon his head. That means he's never going to cut his hair. For the child shall be a Nazirite to God from the womb. That means separated for God. Okay, dedicated solely for, for God. And he shall begin to save Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Philistines. Mm -hmm. When you read this, the uh, the angel gave specific instructions for raising the child as a Nazarite, dedicated to the Lord, and specific instructions as well on the mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very important. So these are the terms in these promises. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, God promises are often come with conditions or requirements, if you want to call it that way, mm -hmm. right? That reveals His desire for a relationship with us. Okay, but it's always based on obedience and also based on not violating the character of God. Mm -hmm. mm. So, again, for example, throughout the Bible, as we read it, we see that God's promises are often contingent on faith, mm -hmm. repentance, obedience from his people. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you repent, then God would. There's a condition. There's a term. Amen. <laughs> It's not like, oh, I'm going to claim this promise. This is the promise for the Lord. You have to understand, what's the term? Yes, salvation is offered to everyone, but only to those, here's the term, that those who would, what? Submit to the Lordship, to under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, by grace through faith, that we will put our faith in what He has done for us at the cross. That's the terms. So, yes, there are promises in the Bible, but we need to understand there are terms for this. And it requires, when you read the Bible, most often faith, repentance, obedience. That's going to be repeated over and over in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Faith, repentance, obedience. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, yes, maybe, Lord, there's a promise that you've spoken. Maybe some of us, we have not followed the terms. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's why maybe it's not coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. So when we align ourselves with God's terms... By trusting in His promises, by putting our faith, believing, obeying His commands, walking in His ways, those are the terms. As you read that scripture, these are the things repeated. We experience the fulfillment of this promise in our lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't happen. It's because, again, we have not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But, of course, there's some situation we're in, you know, because... And maybe you're saying, oh, why is it happening here? Because the people didn't repent. The people didn't cry out to the Lord. But again, God is acting out based on the covenant that he had made with his people. Yeah. So he is following the terms mm -hmm. while the people were not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, all right, let's read some for you. This is Emil Pedre. Good evening, Pastor Robert and Jennifer listening, watching from New Zealand. Thank you for joining, Emil. Mm -hmm. All right. So any comment from, from your end, Jen? Yeah, well... I, I love it because, you know, I love point number one. You know, God yeah. is faithful to his promise and all of us. And all of us like, hey, oh, amen. <laughs> but, we love to hear that. Oh, okay, God is faithful to his promise. So, you know, you, you're just going to keep on claiming, claiming, claiming. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with claiming it, you know, or declaring it. But more than just claiming it and declaring it, you know, I think I love the number two point, which balances, yeah. you know, this... The, the extreme the, of uh -huh. the, 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 the tendency 
of us being extreme on point number one. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you can claim all the promises of God that you want, but if you keep on living opposite from God's purposes and will, you know, and not, walking, and not walking in obedience and not repenting, not putting your faith in Him uh, and trust in Him, then, you know, then what's... What are you expecting? Like, wh why are you expecting? You're living in <laughs> sin. That's what's happening now. You're going to be oppressed. Yeah. And you're wondering, oh Lord, why is this happening? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know if the right term is, you know, you're entitled to to the promise. Could like, be. you feel like There's, you're yeah, entitled entitlement. to the promise, mm -hmm. but then you, you yourself are not, you know, um, um, willing. willing to uh, submit to the terms. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and, and you feel like, God, where's, why are you not fulfilling your promise to me? Why is it taking too long? But, you know, I, yeah. think, <laughs> I think... Let's let's give some few examples. Okay, as a pastor, I've, been, I've watched this, you know. The first one is that uh, financial blessing. Yeah. Let's go start with that, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So, I think this is very basic because when you look at the prayer requests of people, three. Number one is money, mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And somehow about relational situations, healings, you know, all, all of those. So the three, right? So first is money. So here, here we are. We want, we're claiming, you know, Lord, you've said that, you know, the blessing, you will bless us. The head, not, uh, the yeah, not the tail and all of those that, you know, overflowing blessing. blessing yeah. But you read the Bible, there's a term. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're not giving what belongs to the Lord, you're That's rubbing right. him. You're not going to be blessed. That's right. So, sowing and reaping, ladies and gentlemen. So, so if you're robbing Malachi 3, if you want to read that, if you're robbing God, so then you're claiming for financial breakthrough. God is faithful to his promise, but it's based on his terms, not on yours. You don't make that decision and say, God, you know, the term maybe, Lord, I know the tithe belongs to you, but I'm not going to fulfill that. Maybe half of the tithe. So maybe that would work. I mean, I'm not God. I'm not going to be able to speak for God. But I could just go look at the scripture that when it comes to financial blessing, there are terms. Yeah. That's all I could say. Mm -hmm. There are terms. If we don't follow the terms, we don't get the fruition of the promise. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or that's why there's a delay until, yeah, there's until a delay. you actually follow the terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else? And that one. So again, yeah, sample, right? So we're looking at the finances. What's the next one that I mentioned? Relationship. Relationship. So, you want to find the right person. We talk about, you know, finding the right person. Uh, maybe, ma you know, of course, uh, we're looking at that person. You're praying for a future husband, future wife. Uh, when I say that, a man and a woman, all right? That's what I'm talking about here. Let's just go. I don't want things to be vague here. Mm -hmm. This is what we stand for. You know, marriage is between a man and a woman. That's right. Okay? That's what we're talking about. You're praying for that. Mm -hmm. But yet, here's what it is. But net, you're sleeping around. There's terms. Mm -hmm. And now you're watching that Lord bless this relationship. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I pray that if we are going to be together, if this is the right person for me, but you're sleeping before you got married. Mm -hmm. You're violating the terms. And now you're asking God for that relationship to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And again, when you read the Bible, mm -hmm. sexual immorality, sin, there's some consequences when we do that. Mm -hmm. But somehow we just claim the promises and we think that we are what? That the, when we violate the terms, that's still applicable to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some consequences because that's what it is in the Bible. There's consequences when we sin. Mm -hmm. You cannot choose the consequence. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is still going to be gracious. He's going to offer redemption, but we can't avoid the consequence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. so a few comments here. Let's read Jay-Z's comment. I think sometimes we tend to focus on the things we prioritize are the most in our life that we are waiting for God to fulfill that promise. Something. I can't, I'm not fully understanding the yes. first part. Yes. Um, but then the second part, he says, we tend to forget those small promises that God has fulfilled in our lives. We don't realize that it has made a big impact in our personal life. Oh, I, I get what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think we are so focused on the big promises to be fulfilled, but then we don't see the small promises that God has already fulfilled. Yes, and again, that's another way for that. But based on what we're talking about, I think it's more connected on, on point number one. Uh, yeah. So, But we're point number two now, but yes, I understand what you're going there, JC. Mm -hmm. But I think for me is that the term. So this is what we're talking about here. 
So we're looking at the finances, we're looking at relationship, and we're looking at healing. Okay, I'm not going to say that God is not going to heal you, but also God has given us common sense as well, mm -hmm. that we should take care of our body. That's right. Okay. I'm not saying that when you're not, you're, God is not going to heal you. I mean, that is God's prerogative, mm -hmm. whoever he wants to heal. But now if you're praying for healing and you're eating what you're not supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. Or not drinking your not medicine. Not drinking your medicine. You're not, to do. You know, again, this basic, you know, you know that you have a, a bad cholesterol, high level of bad cholesterol, but you're still eating the food that you're not supposed to eat. You're and not, you're gonna say God is gonna heal me, but you're eating the the stuff that are not supposed. And not only that, sometimes we question, Lord, uh, why is hap what's happening to me? Uh, you said, Lord, that you know uh, that my health is gonna be blessed. And God is not uh, free will. You're exercising your free will and choices. Maybe it has an effect on how you you know how you're feeling right now. See. All of those kind of stuff. Just some basic stuff, but there's more. All right? Yeah. Let's read from uh, uh, Sherry Lean. Uh, mm -hmm. Sherry Lean. I had, I've had 17 years of ups and downs in my life. I feel like my problems never end and I was about to give up. But darkness didn't win. I made it through by faith. I constantly hold God's promise in high regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe because you have learned to submit to God's will. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we have learned to obey His commands, mm -hmm. to walk in His ways, mm -hmm. and, and and I think that's I think for me, Jen, when it comes to trusting the, the promises of God, here's for me the two things that we need to talk that we need to discuss. We don't trust God's promises is because sometimes we don't obey His commands, mm -hmm. and also we don't walk in His ways. Yes. So for the people that says, "Oh, I trust God's command," but if you don't do the two. Mm -hmm. That means you don't trust him. Yeah. Because you're still going to do violate. Like, for example, Abraham, you know, at a certain point of his life, what? He didn't believe that God could really give him an heir. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He did his own thing yeah. with Hagar. Mm -hmm. And the problem still persists even today. Yeah. So that's the thing. That's what I'm talking about. So, but again, God in his goodness still redeemed the situation because he loves us. All right, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Kathy is saying, Kathy Balmeo is saying good evening to all listeners. Yeah. Hello, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. So, yeah. come on. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. Yeah. And Kathy's watching from Long Beach. Thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah. Yeah. I love it that God's promises are based on His terms and not our terms. And I think that the more that we um, choose to resist or not embrace or not submit to His terms, yeah. in other words, Lordship, <laughs> Then there, then it is actually our loss, not God's loss. Exactly. And, and, and hear me today as I see this. When you talk about the terms, the one that has a bigger role to fulfill is God, not us. Yeah. Because let me just yeah, be clear. Because sometimes when we think terms, oh man, so so I'm going to go care. Do. So many things to do. I mean, all of this I'm going to do. And what is God's uh, part on this? Actually, he's the one lifting everything. All he wants is your we obey. Cooperation. <laughs> cooperation. <laughs> your so cooperation. that's all. Yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. because sometimes we think terms, because sometimes we think of that like a confident where the upper, uh, the other person has the upper hand, yeah. and you're like at the losing end. You have no choice and everything. Yeah. No, actually, God is the one is the heavy lifter here. Yeah. All we need to do is to cooperate, mm -hmm. and that sometimes is quite difficult for us. Mm -hmm. When we, again, what's the issue? Lordship, just like what you said, when you trust them, when you give what belongs to Him, yeah. He will bless you. Yeah. When you trust, when you follow yeah. and not sleep around, that God is going to give you the right pe the right person. Yeah. And I think we have to understand that, you know, it takes a step of faith to All of this. fulfill the terms and then the promises is going to happen. It's not going to happen the other way around. Like yeah. the promise is going to come first before you fulfill the terms. No, it's you fulfill the terms. God blesses it, you know. <laughs> God blesses when you put your faith in Him, when you repent, when you obey Him. You know, that's what it is, you know. So, love it. Okay, people are still writing. This is Sherry Lean, mm -hmm. okay. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Christina first. Christina first. She says, when we see a pattern that happens to us, a problem or a situation that's happening again and again, maybe we are not learning and that's God, the, the things God wants us to learn. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening in the life the of, of the Israelites, Israelites. in the book of Judges. The 350 years uh -huh. of seven generation cycle of rebellion. Yeah. But you know what? 
I I could I love now I love the book of Judges before I, I didn't <laughs> you're like it. Joshua yeah oh really yeah, Pastor Joshua doesn't like the <laughs> he book he loves Judges. it now he likes it now he's pretending okay. that he still doesn't that's good but somehow when during our preachings you know uh, yeah. discussions he's like mm, he's offering more yeah. take actually on this yeah because I like what Christina said and I think it's it's a picture of you know our Us. Actually, it, it is my life being yeah. unfolded here. Like that's why if you are getting tired of reading the book of Judges, that they're doing it again and another again after how many years they did it again, and you're you're gonna get tired of hearing it and again they did it in the eyes of the Lord. How many times? How many times? And then you look at your life and you're like, oh, I did it that's again. That's why what's happened? Oops, oh. I did and it again. I know, and it didn't even you know take forty years for you to do it again. <laughs> That's why the end hit me baby one more time. Yeah. <laughs> <That's my thing. laughs> well, for, well, for us, you know, we did it in just a few hours, a few days, and we're, oops, we did it again. Yeah. You know, and I think, uh, you know, this, the book really gives us a picture of our lives. And mm -hmm. I think it gives us also a picture of how faithful our God is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Surely it says, but seek first the kingdom of God, kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Matthew 6, 33, it is prioritizing God over survival. Let's read this from Lila mm -hmm. and here's what she said. Okay, let me read. Okay. Trusting God means accepting his terms and choosing to walk by faith rather than sight when you're going through the wilderness and the waiting. I realized that hanging on to God and his promises every day is so important. When I wasn't then, that's when the thoughts of hopelessness and giving up consumed my thoughts. Let's hang on every day and refuse to give up. Amen. Amen. All right. So Love this it. is uh, Arlene Aguilon. Uh -huh. Submission to God's will will have a big effect to our prayers and favors we are asking from God. God is always ready, but the question is, are we ready? Mm -hmm. uh, Arlene says, Haha, the song stuck in my head last Sunday. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Yeah. And See, Joshua said, uh -huh. decided to learn from other books in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> he still refuses he still to refusing, say that he likes course, the book of Judges. He likes the We'll the see New after Testament 14 books. weeks. He likes the New Testament books. I have to give it to him, but I, me, because I think because I love You'll history. You'll never know. You'll never know. Oh, he's changing. He might, he's changing. He might so. convert. I'm just kidding, Joshua. It's already been changing. So it's just, <laughs> yeah. And again, this is the heart of that. God promises are based on his terms. So when it's not being fulfilled, it's not because God is not fulfilling mm -hmm. it. Maybe what we look, what we want to look at, <laughs> is on the other side of this two party. Maybe not God, but our side. We're in. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. So am I walking in His ways? Am I obeying His commands? Am I trusting Him? Is there faith yeah. into this? Those are the questions that we need to ask. Because sometimes we blame God most of the time. Yeah. Lord, it's your fault. Lord, you did this. Lord. You're, God not is, doing you're not doing this. Lord, look at what's happening with my family. Lord, look at what's happening at my workplace. Lord, it's always been, uh, it's always been when we blame, always, it's always God's fault. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, when we look at the, for lack of a better description here, when we look at the covenant, we look at the terms. Who's not fulfilling the terms? Mm -hmm. And I assure you, it's not God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Most, yeah. <laughs> Most probably. There's a 100% <laughs> chance it's not God. <laughs> Okay. So JV says, you know, please kindly pray for healing and restoration to my paralyzed right arm and right leg due to stroke. Uh, okay. It's a, okay. Uh, and please kindly pray for small blessings. Sorry, uh, JV, we're going to erase this. We don't do this here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if you want, get in touch, message us, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, send us a message into our direct face, message, direct yes, message in our, our Facebook, Facebook page. Line, yeah. Facebook mm -hmm. page. Because we don't uh, encourage solicitation, solicitation in the in the whole live stream. Live stream. Mm -hmm. All right, but we right. have uh, ways to, you know, uh, help people. But what we do is also we do due diligence of who those people are. Mm -hmm. We just don't send money to people because yes. again, due diligence is very important because these are money that people gave, mm -hmm. and they trust the leadership that we're going to fulfill. Um, we're going to use the resources the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Um, LV, Mami LV says, Thank you, Lord, for this blessed day, and may you bless us more for our obedience. Amen. All right. So, that said, when you look at all of this, of course, we've studied this just like what I've said. God is weaving the story. God is the one working behind the scene. Yes. You're going to see this more, in this uh, not this coming Sunday because it's Family Fun Day, but on July 7th mm -hmm. when we preach this, you're going to see this sovereignty of God. God weaving all of this story, mm -hmm. even in the, you know, in the flawed character of Samson, mm -hmm. you would see that how God uses this situation to accomplish his purpose. Mm -hmm. All right? So uh, let's read this from Zell. And Zell says, I was encouraged with all the inputs of sharing deeper understanding about the words you shared, Pastor Robert, and praying together. Thank you. That's the purpose. That's why we wanted you to write your comments here and what God has been speaking to you because I know that some people are going to be blessed, yes. you know, when they read that. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me and Jen just, you know, talking, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. So now, at the end of the day, here's what happened. At the last portion, we're going to move at the very end because we're going to pray. Mm -hmm. And the woman, according to here, verse 24, the last two, the last 24, 25, is the last verse is 25th. So, and the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. Let's start. Let's stop there. And what is this? God fulfilled his promise. Mm -hmm. God indeed fulfilled this promise. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to promise, but it's another thing for you to be able to fulfill that promise. God saw the situation of the people. He didn't, they didn't cry out, but God was faithful to his promises. Mm -hmm. Because that's who he is, that's his character. Mm -hmm. And then he intervened. Mm -hmm. Because that's how much he loves his people. And all of this means nothing if God didn't fulfill this promise. So it's all talk. Mm -hmm. But not, God is not all talk. He acts upon his promise. Mm -hmm. God fulfills his promise to his people. He bore a son just like what he had spoken. And he called the name Samson just like what he said, sunshine. And the young man grew and the Lord blessed him. What God had spoken, he accomplished. What God had said, he has done. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God that we serve. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of God that we serve. Mm -hmm. You know, that when he speaks, when he promised, he will fulfill that promise. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because again, we could have been reading this at the very end and the woman remained childless mm -hmm. and barren all throughout for another 40 years. Mm -hmm. No, what was spoken when he intervened, they didn't cry out. God intervened. God, you know, responded, fulfilling his promise. And here's the, here's the answer. And the woman bore a son and called, his, uh, and called his name Samson. So that means God fulfilled his promise to his people. That's the God that you serve. Whatever he had spoken to us, according to you know Paul, they are yes and amen in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful thing about this. Because God, you know, when you read this story in the Old Testament, it's a foreshadowing. The greatest promise, the most difficult promise was to redeem us. The most difficult promise is when Jesus Christ came down here to be with us, gave his life for us, died on the cross, redeemed us by what shedding his blood on the cross that's why all the promises are yes and amen in christ because everything else that the lord has spoken christ is the epitome of that promise mm -hmm. god fulfilled this promise to his people god fulfilled this promise to us when he god the father sent the, the god the son to die on the cross mm -hmm. for you and i mm -hmm. so this is the kind of god that we serve when people are unfaithful, this is the story of the book of Judges. It again repeats here in, in the story of Samson. They were unfaithful, but God was still faithful. Yeah. Even yeah. though they don't deserve yeah. the faithfulness of God. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, and while you were talking, I was reminded of, you know, when Jesus when Jesus came, um, right? And it said that um, while we were still sinners, you know, yeah. Christ died for us. Yes. We, we weren't even looking for God. We weren't even, and just like what happened in Samson's time, the people were not crying yeah. out to the Lord for help in the same way when we were dead in our trespasses. We were not searching for God. We were not looking for Him. But in His loving kindness, in His grace, in His mercy, and His faithfulness to His promise to His people, He sent His Son to die in the cross yeah. for us. That's, you know, yeah. that's... And, a, and right? that's... That's what the story of us and God. And God was working behind the scene even if we don't notice it. Mm -hmm. He's working behind the scene. You may not see it. You may not recognize it. But it doesn't mean it's not working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's read a few comments. Gabi says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. 
and he remains true to his nature, a covenant keeping God. Yes, that's the nature of who God is. Great point there, Gabby. Mm -hmm. And that's really who he is. Mm -hmm. And also not only that God is the one who fulfills promise, but also God is the one who works behind the scene, mm -hmm. even when we don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. He is working behind the scene. Even in your life right now, God is working behind the scene. Don't give up. Continue holding on to the promises of God. But also understand the terms. Mm -hmm. So you can't claim the promises of God if you broke the terms. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and God is working behind the scenes even when we don't deserve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's grace. Mm -hmm. there, it, it's always about that grace. But even if we don't recognize it, even when we don't deserve it. That's some good preaching right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's read this from Glendale. Mm -hmm. Glendale sa says, We are holding into God's promises to our son, Xander. We got discouraged by how unfair our son was treated yesterday, but my husband and I were reminded that he is in control with our son's situation, his autism. It was really unfair that I bought and brought popsicles, but he was denied and was not given a piece. Mm -hmm. Should mm -hmm. that stop us from giving smile to kids? Nope. We are blessed and loved by God and people around. Amen. Uh, and people that, that, around I us. I think he's not, she's around. not done yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still typing, I think. Yeah. But that is true. Even in the injustice, even in you know yeah. the injustice that we experience, sometimes, sometimes it's not caused by us, but it's caused by the people around us. But it doesn't mean that God is not working. Yeah. The reality is that we live in a world that is evil. Mm -hmm. The depravity of man exists. Sometimes we kind of like blame God for everything that happens. But you have to understand, God has given us free will. Yes. And those people are going to exercise those free will either to honor God or either to what? To do something that is not honoring, glorifying to the Lord. Yes, that's but right. it doesn't mean that he's not in control. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he's not, he's not at work. Yeah. He is at work. Even if we don't recognize it, also he is at work. We're working behind the scene even if we don't deserve it mm -hmm. yeah um and i think what glendale is also speaking about is the way that god responds when you know people do evil things in his yeah. sight you know <laughs> he still responds in loving kindness and grace and mercy and so yeah. i love it christina says how prideful of us not to seek god anymore yeah. amen that's yeah. right actually yeah. when you stop praying to god that is actually a sign of pride, because it means that you, uh, you, you, you are not coming to the Lord anymore and seeking Him. Yeah, Sheridan says Jesus is the answer. If we have Jesus, we lack nothing. I agree with that. But again, going back to the terms that yes, we have Him, but the the, the question is, do we choose Him? Mm -hmm. That's right. There's a difference of having Him and choosing Him. Yeah. And choosing Him means that it's obeying Him and walking in His ways. Mm -hmm. Because I've heard that from a lot of people, you know, I have Jesus, but everybody you know, is given a chance to have Jesus. But mm -hmm. do we choose him? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So this Joshua. is from Joshua. Okay, go ahead. If it's not happening in your time frame, it doesn't mean it's not happening. The God who goes ahead of you is the same God who works behind the scene. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Nice. And what an emoji from Mommy Eugenia. So okay. is that a person praying or? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we're praying for you, whatever that means, okay? 